Hi, Facebook land. This is Sarah McLaudry from Synergy Behavior Solutions. You're joining me out on my back deck, and we're going to talk about muzzles today. I'm going to turn my camera down here a little bit. So we've got tons of muzzle options out there, and I just want to take a moment here to talk about our different options we can have. Um, people get overwhelmed with muzzles because there are so many choices. And what do you do? What's best for you and your dog? It kind of depends on why you need a muzzle. And the first thing is, um, are you needing it for issues due to aggression? And what kind of protection do you need? Are you dealing with a dog who's eating inappropriate items? Because that's a very different muzzle than some others. Um, and maybe you have a shy dog who is, you don't want people coming up to you. So you want to use the muzzle as a deterrent for people coming up to you. Just kind of depends, like I said. So we're going to talk about all the different muzzles that I have here on my table and why we would use different ones for different situations. I'm going to start first with the Baskerville Ultra. This is actually a tan version. Most people are used to seeing this muzzle black because that's the main color it comes in. This is a readily available muzzle. It is an excellent muzzle. We use this one a lot. Um, it comes in a variety of sizes from a size small to this is a size three. So this is their middle of the range and a wide variety of dogs can use this muzzle successfully. There normally is a center strap here. We frequently take the center strap off for, it depends on the reason. Um, a lot of times it's just in the dog's way and we don't necessarily need it. So if we don't need it, we like to go ahead and take it off. Um, this strap here is actually to run through a dog's collar. And what's great about that is if you have a dog who maybe has a really thin neck, but a big head or a sorry, a thick neck, but a thin head, it can help anchor the muzzle on more properly. This muzzle can be tricky to fit for some dogs though, so you have to be careful. We do a lot of adjustments to this muzzle. We add foam in the nose band. You also can boil this muzzle and change its shape a little bit, which is great. It gives you a little more flexibility on the sizing of it. Because with any muzzle that you're using, you want to make sure that your dog can pant and eat and be comfortable and drink and do all of those kinds of things. You don't want it to impact their day-to-day -day living. So that's the Baskerville Ultra. Like I said, readily available, lots of different stores. And we do like that. We use that muzzle a lot. We sell it at Synergy. So then I want to show you, this is the Baskerville Ultra knockoff. Um, I bought this at a local independent pet store here in Portland. And I've also seen it online in a number of places. I do not like this muzzle for this reason. You can smash it in. So imagine if a dog was being aggressive towards something and they can completely smash and get their mouth in and even bite on this piece. So um, I bought this one not realizing how flexible it was. I don't love this muzzle, okay? Just be honest. Uh, I also did take off the center strap. I have used this muzzle for my uh, water spaniel in veterinary settings. She will give lots and lots of warning though before she would ever snap at anybody. So that's why I am comfortable using this muzzle because if she's gotten to the point of snapping, they've done something wrong to be perfectly honest. But I would not purchase this muzzle for any dog who has aggression issues. I think it's too flimsy, it's got too much flexibility and it causes problems for that reason. All right, so then we go into some other types of basket muzzles. A lot of times people think that we can't put muzzles on tiny dogs. So this is a, I don't even think this is the smallest one that we have. This is, uh, used, it used to be called Guardian Gear. I'm not sure exactly the brand name anymore, um, but it's a super cute little tiny muzzle. If muzzles can be cute and tiny, I think they can. Traditionally, this muzzle has a complete um, bars across the front. And since we are big proponents of being able to feed our dogs through muzzles, we actually cut a little hole here so that we can give treats and so that we use this muzzle. The problem with this muzzle is the clip can be very, as you see, I can't even get it open. The clip can be challenging. There we go. So I have had a client redo the clip on this muzzle to a Velcro situation with industrial strength Velcro. Um, but otherwise, great option for small dogs. This is smaller than the smallest Baskerville. Um, and I, there are a couple other sizes that this Guardian Gear comes in too, um, Amazon. Then we have 
this one. I love the color of this muzzle. I bought this one on um, Etsy. So I look for muzzles all sorts of places and I like to try out different options. What I love about this muzzle is it has a built-in foam padding right on the nose, which is great. And it has a, a waterproof uh, strap, which is awesome. There are pre-punctured holes on the strap. So if it doesn't quite fit your dog, you'd probably have to add a couple extra holes. This one is great for dogs that have longer noses and they need more room to pant. So it has a lot of space on the bottom size of the muzzle, which is super great for um, shepherds and uh, pointy nosed dogs of any type. I, I did a, um, like a whippity type dog, not this big a size, um, but also same shape. And also super easy to feed through. So love that. I love the colors. This one comes in a bunch of really cute colors. So for people that are concerned that their muzzle is going to make their dog look scary and evil, uh, how can a bright blue muzzle be scary and evil? So that's a great option also. This one is called the Jaffco muzzle. This is plastic. Um, this is a great choice for dogs who eat inappropriate items. And it has lots of holes on the side of it and up here and down below. And it gives full coverage. Also nice wide opening. So if you have a dog that needs more panting room, really great option there. I have found that this muzzle can be a little narrow on the sides, depending on the dog. So uh, really wide muzzle dogs, these sometimes aren't the best fit. Also built in fuzzy pad on the nose, which I love. Also waterproof strap, which is great. The whole thing can be put in the dishwasher. Awesome. So, cause sometimes muzzles get scuzzy. With the, our Jeffco's, we do, we have cut a hole, a small hole in the front of them, bigger than the little holes that they have. And we've done that so we have easy access to putting treats in the muzzle to give our dogs reinforcement. Now, if you had a dog that was eating inappropriate stuff, you may want that hole a little bit smaller. But even if they were eating inappropriate, this is a pretty small hole, easy to get treats in, but hard to get other stuff through that hole. So this is a Jaffco. Um, couple places online that you can pick them up. They're not really common, but great option for depending on the size of your dog. Then we have our brachiocephalic muzzle. We're not totally sure if this is the best muzzle for our brachiocephalic dog, but it is one of the few options out there. So the little nose goes here in that little orange spot. Um, so you can give treats through there. One of our concerns with this muzzle, depending on the shape of the dog's head and where their eyes are in relation to their skull, is that this mesh can rub against their eyes. And since a lot of our brachiocephalic dogs do have a little bit more of a bulging eye and they can have a lot of eye problems, you want to really be careful that that doesn't happen to them. So, but this is a good option, uh, Amazon, and we've used it for one or two dogs and it has been successful for them, but definitely fit and making sure that their eyes aren't touching the mesh is really, really critical for that muzzle. We also have our wire traditional, we, a lot of times people call these greyhound uh, muzzles. These were muzzles that were frequently used for dogs for greyhound racing. If you have a really strong dog, really sturdy, um, if you're having some dog to dog aggression issues, this is a really sturdy muzzle that's gonna hold up well. The, also though, it has no flexibility. So if you have a dog who has a wide muzzle, once again, not a great option for a really wide face dog. Uh, leather strap, so not waterproof, but leather nose band here so that this doesn't rub against them. And there actually is a gap between the nose band and the metal cage. Lots of room to get treats through, but also not my favorite just because not easy to wash, um, it is sturdy though, so if you want to have something that lasts for a long time, definitely sturdy and will hold up to a lot of use. Then, this is, uh, this is called the Smuzzle. Not many people know about the Smuzzle at all. I didn't learn about it until I came to work at Synergy Behavior Solutions. So the idea behind the Smuzzle, this is my fake dog, hello, um, is that if this is perfect for dogs who eat inappropriate items. This is not a muzzle designed for aggression issues. So the dog, is, it has elastic on the top, so there's lots of give. The dog can easily open and close their mouth. They can pant, they can run, they can do all, they can drink through this. They cannot eat through it though, okay? So you definitely have to work on conditioning your dog to be comfortable with this before you go out and about with this muzzle. 
But if you have a dog that has some pica issues or is, are you hiking an area that has some dangerous items that they could eat, and your dog is notorious for that, as is one of my dogs, um, this is actually a really great option for those types of dogs. All right, that's a smuzzle. Then traditionally people think of muzzles as these little slip muzzles. This is a tiny slip muzzle. Why don't we like slip muzzles? So I've talked about in all of these muzzles about needing to breathe, eat, pant, drink, and you cannot do this in this type of muzzle. This is a muzzle that you routinely would see in a grooming shop or in a veterinary practice. They are starting to fall out of favor for the reasons we just described. This is not a muzzle I would want to ever have on my dog for more than a very short while. So uh, we really stay away from these types of muzzles. They're not effective for what we're trying to do with our desensitization and counter conditioning while we're muzzle training. So now you've seen all these muzzles and you're like, oh, my dog isn't going to fit in any of those muzzles at all. What do I do? So you can go to custom muzzles. This is a muzzle built by a company called Bumas, and Bumas is in Austria. They are expensive, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, but they are completely customizable. They have different options for the amount of coverage in the front. So this actually has a fair bit of opening, so you can easily get treats through, but they have ones where there's no openings if you have a dog that eats inappropriate items. They have all sorts of different options. They have a, a head strap, they have openings on the nose for uh, brachiocephalic dogs. Definitely our brachiocephalic dogs and small dogs, doing custom muzzles are an absolute great option. They're worth the investment. Luckily now, we also have a company here in the United States called um, Trust Your Dog Muzzles. They're based in Colorado, and they are making the same type of muzzles with using the biothane material I know currently they just posted on their Facebook page, they're a bit busy, so they're not taking any new orders at, the, at this very moment, but that doesn't mean they won't be in a few weeks. Um, they're just getting started on this. They are doing some amazing work with options for the underbite dogs, brachiocephalic dogs, and giving lots of great custom options, both with color and with fit for your dog. And so that's a really great option. Like I said, I know it's a bit of a price shocker sometimes initially, but the long-term investment is worth it. You're not going to need to buy a muzzle again once you've got the right muzzle. And so a one-time investment for a dog with a custom muzzle is well, well worth the option for it. So these are most of the muzzles out there. Um, there may be one or two few other ones out on the market, but these are the ones that we carry always in our facility. And we the biggest thing that you need to look for when you're looking at muzzles is fit. Fit is key. Your dog needs to be able to pant. They need to be able to breathe. They need to be able to eat treats. It needs to not affect their day-to-day -day living. Otherwise, they're not going to want to wear it, and you're not going to be able to move forward with your desensitization and counter conditioning, whatever you may be using it for. So fit is key. We are having a introduction to muzzle training webinar coming up on Thursday, June 4th and at uh, noon Pacific time. So you can go ahead and sign up there. We'll talk about how you start to train this, very beginning stages of training. You must train a muzzle. You cannot put it on a dog and expect a dog to be comfortable with it and be willing to do, item, do stuff while wearing the muzzle. You have to train it. It can be trained. We have tra I have successfully trained probably hundreds of dogs at this point wearing muzzles. Everything from dogs who've never seen a muzzle, which is super easy to train, to dogs who at the sight of the muzzle actually become humanly directed aggressive and everything in between. And I have successfully trained all of those types of dogs to be able to comfortably wear a muzzle in a variety of settings. So it can be done even if your dog has a negative connotation. So come and join us for our webinar, Muzzle Magic on June 4th at noon Pacific time. You can sign up at synergybehavior.com and check that out. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in our notes on our this Facebook post, and we'll gladly answer questions. If there is a link that you need to any of these particular muzzles, just let us know. You can describe what the muzzle looks like, and we can put a link to that. Like I know I can send you the link to this one from Etsy, things like that, if you're having trouble finding them. And have a great day. I hope you're enjoying the, hopefully it's sunshiny where you're at, as it is here in the Pacific Northwest. And have a great day, and we'll see you again in a few. Bye.